This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter um, named Alex Harris. Mr. Harris, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. How are you? Fantastic, man. Welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Thank you for having me, Todd. I'm glad to be here. No worries, man. Um, I'm, I'm so excited to talk to you today, man, because uh, I got sent some music uh, from your team and, um, um, frequency is your new EP that's out, but you also have a new right. uh, holiday song out called, uh, every, right. every day would be like a holiday. Every day would be like a holiday. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to get into that. Cause, um, um, well, well, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but before we do, um, for those who don't know Alex Harris, tell us about Alex Harris. Well, um, I'm 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 a music artist and songwriter, uh, producer, as well as a humanitarian. I um, love what the arts, uh, the power of music, the power of the arts as a whole, and how it really uh, is able to inspire, uh, to empower uh, folks, and and to to bring heal and and healing and hope to to human experience. And so that's that's who Alex is. Um, that's what I've. Uh, do on a regular every day <laughs> seek to do those use use my gift to to um, do those things inspire to heal to bring hope to to the world okay and uh quickly uh where are you from well i'm originally from a little town called manchester georgia i'm one of eight children five boys three girls and i'm in the middle and um we grew up doing music uh in the backyard and in our parents church <laughs> <laughs> and uh, later start to travel as a family group uh, doing gospel music, uh, fathers of pastor um, throughout uh, the city and, and beyond. And later the brothers um, of, the, of, of the family decided to pursue a little a, a career, a short, short, short career in, in music as a collective and, and other. Uh, and then three of the brothers pursued it, uh, individual doing different things, producing, musical directing, and I'm performing. Um, but uh, growing up, you know, music, faith and education were the three uh, main elements. And so um, today uh, when I who I am, I am all three of those. I, I have strong faith of, of, uh, and believe that when one is uh, committed to um, her, his calling uh, and whatever that is, I think uh, it, it not only does it's, it's great for you, uh, great for me as an individual. Right. Um, but also great for our environment and, the, and wherever we are or wherever we go in the world. Um, and I think that that is an inspiration itself. That's what that's the feel that keeps me going. And so um, that that's that's what I'm all about. And and uh, continue to to encourage others to, to do the same in whatever way that it makes uh, a difference, positive difference in their life for, the, for her and him. Okay, so um, you came from a uh, a gospel background, um, right? And you said your family, various family members, um, pursued music in in different ways. Did you guys have like a gospel group? You said yeah, you the gospel group were named A Seven. So we we had a song that did really well called "Don't Walk Away." We wrote. Um, you people may have recognized me or uh, from the Bobby Jones Gospel Show. That was the premier gospel television show for over 30 years great season and so um you know i even with the brothers we didn't just come we were not just confined to the genre of gospel because we believe um as we grew up and started to really understand uh the gift of music uh to to uh, humanity to the world um really is not confined to a label 
uh, our genre, whether it's soul, R and B, whether it's hip hop, R and uh, country, jazz, uh, rock and roll, whatever genre, uh, it's always a great gift for us um, to share to the world and to share our story, uh, whatever the story, whatever your story is, or uh, stories that you're inspired to write about. And I think that when we look at what an amazing gift and and the uh, the the various ways to express this gift to the various listeners who enjoy and embrace or relate to one kind of expression, um, we realize the bigness of um, of our of our Creator, our God, or the the force behind our existence. And so I think that um, that's what really is the uh, the great in what I believe music gives to us and really keeps me excited and keeps me motivated and driven to continue to explore and to uh, to really be open in this expanded um, understanding and, and, a, and, and journey that I'm on with, with music. Okay. Uh, quick question. Um, you said your, your father was a minister? Still uh, is. Still, still is. is. Okay. Yeah. Did... Um, did him and your mom have any apprehension about you guys doing um, secular music or or, or um, going away from gospel, so to speak? Of course, you know uh, our parents are traditionalists, um, so um, the idea of growing and expanding um, is, especially in the beginning. I think we we first started expanding when we were doing classical music and doing uh, beyond gospel. You know, uh, clap hand clapping, foot stomping. And the repetition of traditional, um, some traditional gospel music. Um, however, um, as we grew uh, older and went to college and started to major in different, um, some of us majored in various music. I studied classical vocal. Uh, we toured doing various kinds of songs, uh, obviously not gospel, and um, and from spirituals to other songs um, that you learn. <laughs> and when you're a vocal major in school, your, t- your typical song, it started to open up and expand a little bit. Um, I'm not say I can't say that they are uh, uh, completely won over. You'll find them at a, at a, um, a Beyonce concert or something, but... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they do have a respect for uh, other genres outside of uh, the the gospel as they once were, and we and that's the wonderful thing. It goes back to what I was saying earlier: the beauty of music in the various genres, um, whatever one relates to a feel um, that uh, they connect with, uh, you know, is great. And so, while I'm a soul singer, whether I'm singing a country song or singing a rock and roll or gospel. Uh, are singing an R and B. It it comes from a place of experience and a place of conviction, uh, and so I'm super excited just to to share um, in whatever way that um, I connect with, and then because I believe what's from the heart and soul reaches the heart and soul. Agreed. And um, how did you um, how did you how did you get your start? I mean, you, you mentioned that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great question because I actually got my start in the backyard uh, of our parents' home. And um, it, as early as I can remember, getting the buckets from a neighbor's backyard and taking the pine tree branches from our backyard, you know, collecting all the resources at hand and the, 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 uh, the tin pan uh, from the um, crust, you know, from pie crust that uh, you make the sweet potato pie and pecan pie and so on and so forth. Uh, taking all those resources and making my first drum set and just in the table, the folding table that they set up for the picnics, taking those tables and my brothers and I and, and sisters and we would just go, for, we would do concerts and then we would call play church. <laughs> <laughs> do a, so we were playing church to do a concert and um you know we were just always intrigued by you know creating something we were always creating something and um the good thing about our parents they never said don't stop uh, i mean don't i mean stop doing that and 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 um go do something else they allow creative freedom and that you will see a uh, manifest in, in all of us, all eight of us. And we did all graduate from high school. We did all go to college and graduated. Um, we all are working in, in our um, uh, careers of our, our choice and uh, pursuits. And so it's, it was a great blessing uh, to, to have the kind of parenting that I experienced. And the reason why it led me to was a very huge inspiration to my starting my foundation myself because I realized that every child doesn't have the opportunity that I was so uh, I'm so grateful to to have 
to have that experience. And we were taught to give along the way and to be inclusive and to, you know, help those who can't help themselves or not in a position to have the uh, the the resources that we were blessed to have with. Right. Um, and my dad was inspired and particularly because he grew up in a very impoverished neighborhood too. He lost his father when he was three years old. So he understood the struggle. So he definitely um, sought and worked really hard to ensure that we, um, that he provided all that he could for us as an educator, young educator. And, and then he also did not uh, think it was robbery from us or, uh, or his family to open his doors to several other uh, young folks our age and older to say, hey, come in, the doors open and help. So I really learned that from them and I, and I, and I honor them um, for that, that education in, in, in that way. Okay. Well, yeah, it's great to have supportive parents who yeah. sort of lead you along the way. That's fantastic. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll try to talk about your, um, your foundation too, a little bit later. I think it's great uh, what you're doing for, um, for young people as well. Thank you. Um, so let's talk about, let's first talk about the, um, the new holiday song you have out. Um, Every day would be like a holiday. I think it's great. All right. Um, I saw that was written by uh, William Bell and uh, Booker T. Jones. Oh, yes. That's that's every day would be like a holiday. It's a classic. It's a song that a lot of people actually kind of like hadn't really engaged as you look through the Apple music and and Spotify. And I was like, wait a minute. I actually found this song because I was saying, what song can I do that I really connect with? And, and, and that's not. Um, that hasn't been recorded a lot. Let's just say that. And and uh, I'm always looking for those great tunes that, you know, it's not just about as a writer. I, I just love great writing. So and songs that I and as when it comes to recording songs that I not only uh, that are well written, but I feel they're well written and um, uh, articulate a great message, um, but also um, I can connect with in a way that is very authentically me. Um, so and that comes across in a very great way. And so I, I came across this song in a Motown collection, <laughs> you know, uh, of, of like a compilation of, uh, you know, some of the best. And I and I heard so many great songs in that in that collection. And um, that one, I was like, OK, yeah, that's that's it. And it really related to I was looking also the other thing I was looking for when, when choosing a song was with everything's going on. You know, what is that rich? Um, what song that can speak to where we are? And it's like, we can't really get home like we normally do. So it talks about in the beginning, like every day will be like holiday. It is said, now she's been gone for a very long time. <laughs> and it said, you know, I got a text message today. Well, I, I changed that one lyric to text message, but you know, uh, as opposed to a phone call, I want it to be very, very relevant. And uh, saying that I'm gonna get home soon. And so, but when you do get home, it may not be this Christmas, but every day is going to be like a holiday and we're going to celebrate. We're going to make up for it. And so that's just 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 uh, it relates to everybody's body situation. Uh, and that's what I like music to do. Yeah. As many people as possible. I'm glad you you mentioned that because you had a great quote um, in um, ex explaining the meaning of the song. But before I because I, I want to read it because I think it's it's on point from what we're going through right now. Right. Um, but who because uh, I didn't know. It was a song that had been re previously done. Who originally, originally recorded that song? Actually, William Bell actually recorded with his group. He he wrote it. He co-wrote it with Booker T. But he also um, originally recorded it. And uh, it's really interesting. Um, I just recently heard it in a movie. And it's always like that, like when you buy a car or something, that you start seeing a lot of cars. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I hadn't. I knew of the song, and but I never. It never. And even when I sent it to to um, one of my brothers, who's one of the producers on the on the record on a lot of my recordings, um, and uh, my manager, they were like, "This is a great song." <laughs> and it was like nobody thought about it. We were like going through so many songs, and then I was out jogging uh, or riding my bike. One of I, I exercised in the morning, and I was on the bay and just on the water and just enjoying the sunrise over the water. And and uh, and I uh, heard, I was like, "Oh my god, this is it!" So I immediately texted them, you know. And, uh, and they listened to it when they got out. I got a chance and I said, they said, that's the song. And I was like, great. We finally found a song. It's such an amazing song. It's simple, but amazing to me. It got a great feel to it. Yes, it does. And uh, I want to quickly read that quote because I think it's, okay, sure. 
I think is great for, um, like I said, for what we're going through. And you say, uh, in the toughest of times, we find hope and create magic no matter the circumstances. This year, we are reminded more than ever that the holiday is not about gifts, gifts, glitz, and glamour, but about connecting with the ones we love and share our love with each other. When we learn to appreciate all the blessings we have, every day does really feel like a holiday. Yeah, that is really point, does. man. That is yeah. definitely on point, particularly for um. Well, you know, every day should be that way, but right, particularly twenty twenty. Um, yeah, it seems to when be you lose the, right, it's kind of like you don't miss your water to the well run dry. It's like we 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 have not valued, I think, at the level we may have taken for granted when we can you know, hug someone or shake someone's hand. You know, today I don't feel like shaking your hand. Today I don't feel like saying hello. So I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna run and go around the other way when I see you coming. And sometimes it's our closest friends and family that we don't want to do that. But when you saying, oh my God, like, how are you doing? You know, are you okay? And you realize you say that, you know, that is very, could be, a, that's, they cannot be here. Or or you have fights with, the, with your spouse or your partner. Um, you know, I think it's very important to really see the value of life in each other and what each contribute to each other's life. And, and, uh, and that what makes every day like a holiday It's like amazing, you know, it's like getting up and, you know, unwrapping a gift or, <laughs> you know, having that kind of like amazing vibe, uh, when you, uh, throughout the day, whether it's Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, new year's, you know, that feeling. Yeah. What has been the, uh, the response, uh, to that song? It's actually been absolutely awesome. Um, everyone, um, and I think that it will be a song that, uh, you know, my hope is that it would be one of those songs. Um, I don't know if I can race with Mariah Carey on that one, but <laughs> but but uh, I think it will be, it will rise and it will come to the forefront um, even more as I continue to to move along and, and continue to work uh, on sharing the love to music. Okay. We'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. VGRCWQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. Uh, fantastic. I recommend people go pick it up. Uh, Thank you. Awesome, I appreciate awesome, it. Awesome song. Um, so now let's talk about your latest EP called Frequency, mm -hmm. which I think is another. Um, yeah, man. I mean, you you kind of you put in some work on this one. This was really <laughs> great. <laughs> The work, the work actually came out of uh, out of this this pandemic. I um, we were I, would, I, have, I was doing a quite a bit of writing, and, and I, I always, if I hear it, I, I write it. And um, California, Nashville, New York were the places I would constantly find uh, back and forth um, and on a regular basis, finding people to write with, trying to get a vibe. And um, it wasn't until the national lockdown that this that the body of work, some of the songs that I had started writing, completed some I n had not written, um, was inspired to write, um, particularly like Fallen For You was written right in lockdown, right in the heart of the lockdown. Um, and so it was a time where in the initial, the frequencies I always like to refer to of negativity um, that I started to feel a fear and all those negative things um, happen. And I wanted to um, really, in the beginning, I started to become a little fearful, fear fearful and worried. And I said, okay, how can I um, uh, not succumb to that, right? Um, and to really uh, focus on the positive. And so I started to focus on the on the gift that I've been given this music and started to allow that to rise to the forefront. And so that being said, we, we pulled together this body of work, um, work with an amazing team. And, um, and then at the end, I was like, what are we going to call it? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, nobody really came up with any suggestions. So I remember being, again, awakened one morning because going to bed the night, it was really, I said, I got to come up with the tie. We got to, you know, submit this. And so I reflected on the, the frequencies of all, you know, media, both television, social media, press, et cetera, about, you know, COVID-19 and this many people have died and, you know, do this and do that. Don't do this. So all these things that were not necessarily promoting 
even though they're real. And I said, you got to believe it. It's a real thing. But at the same time, we can't ignore the fact that it does, you know, make us feel more vulnerable, which is cause more, can cause more stress and fear, etc. So becoming more resistant to that, how can I use something really given to humanity? One of the most powerful elements of the universe, fire and water being the other uh, two of the three, I believe, of the uh, uh, most powerful music is, is, a, is a third one. And um, how can I use that? And so I titled the, 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 the EP Frequency and all this music may it uh, really inspire frequencies of positivity, love, hope and, and bring healing to humanity um, for all those who stream it, download it <laughs> and uh, are here in some shape, form or fashion um, that they feel it, you know the song falling for you and rolling by finding love, being in love, song about feel some kind of way, um, really um, from the shootings that happened in all the schools that I had started writing uh, um, during that that time and um, later pulled it out the bag and finished the song. Um, the songs like um, Humanity, um, which was written uh, in response to the George Floyd killings and Breonna Taylor and and really in the, in the outcry that we heard throughout the universe with everybody, with all the protests and and um, that we're doing something positive for, for justice. Um, Cry to Me, classic uh, by Freddie Scott, uh, you know, is all about loving and when you lose and then the importance of the valuing that love. You know, you know, it, it was really um, a, a labor of love and um of hope and healing it really the, the the ep is okay um and because you know we're in a smack dab in the middle of uh COVID, how long did it take you to pull it all together wow um so march april may about three or four months about three or four months yeah uh, three and a half months really um, by the time we got it to submit it everything submitted and, and mixed in and then we got we had a date because the the cover the artwork was done by a skype <laughs> with an artist across the water in like the netherlands <laughs> um i had met this incredible artist uh because of my uh foundation the arts conservatory one of the um one of the philanthropists and supporters said you should meet him he's going to be in town he's from you know uh, he's coming into in, into the country, and his, his wife is a is a famous actress as well. And um, you recognize her from Lord of the Lord of the Dance, I think it is the title of the movie. But you know, she's got so many things. But anyway, I emailed him or I DM him on and said, "Hey, you know, we got I can't do a photo shoot We're in the middle of locked <laughs> and do out coming out. I was very conscientious. I was like, I can't get sick. You know, we're trying to do all this work, and you know, and um, so he said, "Sure." And so we put it all together. Wow. And I just sat, I just sat right in front of the Skype, just like I'm sitting here talking to you and we were talking and he was sketching away and I described to him what I was looking for. And there he goes. And the power of the internet, boy, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> We've all learned that. <laughs> hey, question for you. Um, Cause when I hear your music, um, you have a, a different sounds, you know, and I, I think it's incredible because I hear, I hear a little bit of Otis Redding in you. I hear um, some Al Green in you. I hear some Maxwell in you. <laughs> I hear all those people. I mean, and on different songs. I mean, I don't hear just on one song. I mean, hear like, I might hear a song that you sound like Otis Redding on, you know, it's like, wow, this guy. And then I'm thinking, okay, well, that's his sound. Then I hear another song, it's like, wait a minute. That doesn't sound like the other song that I just heard, you know? Who did you... Um, what did you did you pattern your style after anybody or I honestly didn't pattern? you know I, I I never sat down and said oh I'm gonna try and do this you know um I think as a kid I was highly inspired by Al Green but everybody else I people would tell me that and sometimes I would go back because I didn't share this but we didn't grow up listening to gospel uh music at all I don't know if I said it earlier or not when I was talking about parents but I think that um so it was a, it was a gradual walk. Even when I was a little kid, people were like he liked little James Brown, and I used to be doing the mashed potatoes. Didn't know I, what I was doing. <laughs> um, but if you grew up in a, if you grew up in a charismatic Pentecostal church, you know you dance and you do mashed potatoes and crossing and all that kind of great stuff. Right. And so, but you know, I think there is something um, that's when you talk about uh, an innate connection or connectedness that goes back to our roots all the way to the continent of Africa. And I think we're so um, connected and we're more connected than we believe, even though 
there have been so many things to try to bring division even in the African-American community and on various communities, but especially in the African-American communities historically over time and try to bring divide. But we're so connected in, in how we express our, our ourselves and our stories are very much uh, like the same. And I started to realize that. Uh, and um, But a lot of the artists like Otis Redding, I got into Otis Redding music later. It's not, but people will say, you like Otis or you remind me of Ron Isley or you and and honestly I love all the music but I have to be extremely transparent we didn't grow up listening to a lot of the artists because they didn't have gospel records so um it was so funny to me that when when I started to realize that wait a minute I I do kind of remind myself of these people you know some artists don't like to say well I like to do well I mean if if I remind somebody of somebody, that's what it is. But but the reality is, um, while I love all of the music and I'm inspired by them, um, I never sat down to mimic or try and to uh, like all of us learn through imitation. I never necessarily try to imitate anyone, but Al Green and Shirley Caesar, and you'll see, you know, some of those. Uh, artists that were doing gospel and, uh, and Aretha Franklin later because she would always do gospel. So we could only watch the gospel part of <laughs> Aretha Franklin <laughs> until later. So, but um, when you talk about soul music, I think you're talking about great soul singers like Otis Redding, like Maxwell and so on and so forth. Uh, D'Angelo later and, you know, Lauren Hill and, and the list goes on. Okay. And I think I, what I hear you saying is that uh, we have a frequency. Uh, yes. And what I bought, that's the name of the, EP. So I don't know if it's authentic or, but anyway, it's appropriate for uh, this conversation yeah. at least. Um, so that's out. And how has that been received? It's been received great, man. We, we um, like uh, on, on the um, urban AC charts, we are like uh, number 43, we are something like, I think, but on, on the radio side, but we also on MTV, yo, we on BT Soul, BT Her. So that's kind of put us in the top 40 because they're all a report to media base. So we're, we're doing really great. Um, uh, having a top 40 record on national charts is amazing. We've been on so many other charts, um, not just in the, in the, in the, in the, in the U S but also in other parts of the world, um, that are, that are playing it in the UK, uh, Europe. And, um, it's, it's been absolutely amazing. I've been doing interviews all over, uh, <laughs> via Skype or, or zoom. <laughs> and, um, I'm so grateful that, you know, it's it's very rewarding to know that you can do, you can share your interpretation in a very authentic way, and I can do it in a way that doesn't necessarily, uh, at this moment in time, sound exactly like somebody else. Or I have to go and write a song. I can write. Uh, I can be the artist I am, and I have a team that's supporting by being the artist who I am, and realizing that you know the world people you know we if it's if it's authentic it connects and and and, and there would be an appreciation if, if done well right and i think we had a great team um in in uh in putting this together from engineers and producers you know pr management so on and so forth it's all part of the the toss salad or the ingredients of this uh, this work and and um I'm so glad that it's being received and, and is really sure that you can be yourself. You can talk about what you feel to, um, led to talk about and um, as anyone else does. Right. Um, but you don't have to try and copy what someone else is writing or, or doing or presenting in order to be successful. You can be authentically who you are and what you feel to do to make it. Uh, and people will love it. OK. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, before we get out of here, talk a little bit about your uh, foundation. Sure. Um, so my my organization, Arts Conservatory for Teens, um, was was founded over eight years ago. We piloted three years before that. So technically we're around the uh, 11 year uh, old organization. And so, um, you know, coming from big family and seeing the power of the arts and how it really transformed us and and give us uh, giving us confidence, giving us resilience and learning those amazing skills um, that one should uh, really embrace in order to excel to her his highest uh, self. Um, I wanted to kind of take that experience and put it in an organization. So I launched it on the south side of St. Petersburg. Um, those you don't know, there it is. That's very impar impoverished communities um, in our neighborhoods in the on, on the south side that were not getting the accessibility to quality arts programming. So through uh, my effort and my business partner, we and 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 board founding board, we we're able to roll out 
this uh, amazing organization that um, really has transformed thousands of young people all the way from from, uh, you know, very, very low income families to now working on Broadway um, uh, to working with major film companies to um, working as educators, engineers, and listening to the armed forces, uh, students who were nearing dropout. Um, we partner with uh, the educational system. We partner with community organizations, faith-based organizations, corporations, five Fortune 500 companies, um, small businesses, elected officials to really make a difference. And it is making a difference. It's becoming the model of what you can do uh, through the arts um, in a community. We've seen it done, you know, a hundred times or more with sports. I think. Um, as a creative uh, person, uh, a creative thought leader in my space, I think that I want to, I wanted, I was very inspired to share what my, my experience coming up in a small little country town um, with the world and um, provide that opportunity and platform. So, you know, um, I think uh, as an African-American uh, brother, I, I, I have to stand tall and say that this is another way to express as well. And, 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 and um, in alignment with, others who are expressing in their in their gift as well and uh so i'm very happy and very pleased to to see that we've accomplished 100 percent high school graduation with our coaching and mentoring um all of our students whether they were nearing dropout or not or just needing a little bit coaching to make sure that they are you know on track to graduate um, we have excelled and so i'm super excited about that oh fantastic man and so you said 11 years 11 years strong huh yeah yeah Congratulations, man. Before we get out of here, I know um, you kind of pressed for time. Um, tell people where they can find you at on social media and also. Your sure. So um, you can go to my website, alexharrisofficial.com. Uh, and there, all of my social media handles are there. Facebook is official Alex Harris Music. Um, and Instagram is Alex Harris Official. Twitter, Alex Harris Tweet and uh, um, TikTok. Alex Harris official. So um, it's pretty much I'm official on the website. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, um, yeah, join me. You can stream the record frequency, the holiday. Uh, every day will be like a holiday. Share it, you know, like it if you see it. And uh, on YouTube, my music videos and stuff are there. And and I'm glad to be here. Yeah, no problem. I'm glad to have you quickly. One question. I'll let I mm -hmm. you out of here. What's on tap for 2021 for you? 2021, I got some really great things, um, uh, you know, fingers crossed and uh, everything that uh, we, we get past the pandemic. We're we're um, talking about doing quite a bit of dates and um, as far as touring concerns starting the fall, but we'll be doing other things. But I have some really other cool news happening. We're launching um, in addition to just a traditional concert tour at night during the day in many cities that we go through our lease within 100 miles radius, um, we're going to be doing um, what we call our uh, a tour that's um, we're going to be making an announcement exactly what that's going to be, but it's going to be a tour that's focused on going to schools um, in underserved, underprivileged communities. Um, it's one thing to be on the road and doing all the glitz and glamour on the big stage, um, but I um, have always wanted to make sure that as often as I can to go into those areas that generally won't have the access or resources to attend a concert and really, um, really uh, do something positive in giving back. Still giving back along the way. Got to do that. Yeah. So look out for that. So I'm looking for great things in 2021. All right. Greater things, I should say. No problem. And uh, keep us posted, man. And we'll I will put all Alex information on our website at bringbacksellmusic.com. Uh, Mr. Alex Harris, I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Appreciate I appreciate it, Todd. Right. Thank you. And that's Alex Harris on the Bring Back Soul Music podcast. And we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Mr. Alex Harris. You can find out more about Alex on his website at alexharrisofficial.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify, and brand new Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.